بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to a new segment of Youth Talk. Today's topic, insha'Allah, we're going to talk about the influence of the peers. As you know, the peer has a great influence over his friend or those that talk and intermingle with. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has gave us an example of a good friend, a good peer, and a bad one. He said that the good peer is like a person that sells perfumes. So either you buy from him and you get this nice fragrance, or he gives it to you, or he just gives you a trial of it. So in all cases, eventually, you're going to get something that is good. While a bad peer is like a, a blacksmith who works with coal and iron and if it does not burn your clothes, if it does not hurt you, then the least you get is a bad smell that sticks to you, your body and clothes just because you've been with him. And of course, we all have friends. No one can live alone without friends and peers and people that socialize with him. But what does Islam say about this? Does Islam tell us to go with certain friends and avoid others? This is what we try, we will, what we'll try to explain and uh, elaborate on. And I'd like to hear your questions and inquiries and if you have anything to comment on. So does anybody have a question? Okay. Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask about um, uh, throughout uh, my years, I've developed uh, a relationship with with with, uh, with several female uh, female companions, uh, and uh, basically, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I'll talk to them on campus, or, or or we'll go out together to a to a coffee shop or whatever. Uh, like, like, I mean, we'll be maybe me and uh, me and uh, a female friend alone in my car, or we'll be me and a female friend in the library talking or wherever on campus talking, and I've been uh, criticized uh, quite a bit. Uh, you know, uh, peers have been saying uh, I should not, uh, should not be just me and another female alone in my car, or I should not just be me and a female sitting uh, together uh, in the library uh, alone. Or and uh, although my intentions, uh, my intentions might be uh, clean. I mean, uh, no dirty intentions whatsoever. I've still been criticized, and I wanted to get your some feedback maybe on that uh, topic. The problem is, do we really have clean intentions? Now, this is a controversial issue. A lot of the guys in, in the West, or at least in societies that have uh, that, that uh, mix between females and males, uh, they would say, they would uh, claim that they have clean intentions, that they don't have any uh, um, bad intentions or sexual uh, implications from their relationship. This might be true in a small portion because if you know a hundred females, of course you'll be clean intention with 99 of them. One of them, it has to click. You could work with a secretary. You could study with your classmate, which, is, which, hap which happens to be a female, for let's say a year or two, five years, ten years. What, somewhere down the line, it will click. But Islam comes to hold this clicking, to stop it, to prevent it. Now, if you have acquaintances, if you have friends, female friends, okay, let's assume that you don't have any feelings towards them. I, although I doubt this, but if you do, you should check your physician. Because <laughs> the hormones, you have to, there's something wrong in the home. It's natural. It's natural for a man to be attracted to a woman. And it's natural for women to be attracted to a male, a man. Otherwise, there's something wrong. So, but presumably, presumably that uh, there is no affection, there's no attraction yet from your side, you cannot guarantee that there is no affection from her side. Okay, you, 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 you may not have a crush on her, but she might have a crush on you. And then you will bear the sin of 
uh, tempting that poor girl. Uh, also, you have to bear in mind that we follow the Quran and the Sunnah. And in the Quran and in the Sunnah, we are given few instructions that governs our relationship with the other sex. So, for being alone with a woman in a car or in a room, that is a complete stranger to me. She's not a sister. She's not my daughter. She's not my wife. She's not my aunt. She's not my mother-in-law. These uh, ladies, I can talk and, and be alone with because I cannot marry them by law, by Islam. But to be alone with someone that does not fall under that category is forbidden because the Prophet wasallam said that if a man sits or stays in a, one place with a woman without anybody else with them, then the third party in that place is the shaitan, Satan. And what do you expect Satan is going to tell him? Teach your Quran. <laughs> He's not going to tell you that. He's going to try his best for you to sin. And as I mentioned earlier, Allah Azza wa said in the Quran, do not follow the footsteps of Satan. And he doesn't come to you uh, all of a sudden and says, commit adultery. No, he doesn't. He ne nobody, he would never, never go into anyone and tell him to do so uh, on the spot. But he will come in steps. He will tell you, there's nothing wrong in gazing, looking at her. Okay, I looked at her, uh, an honest look. But then, well, go down and go up and go sideways. You know, look. You mean really look and see the configurations of <laughs> the thing in front of me. And, and, and then, there's nothing wrong in talking. And there's nothing wrong in smiling. The Prophet ﷺ said, smiling in your brother's face is a hasana, is a good reward. So whenever I go, I see my friend Ali, I do this. But when I see my friend Janet, I said, hi, <laughs> what are you doing? He said, well, the Prophet said, I said, I have to smile, and I'm smiling. And afterwards, he said, there's nothing wrong in talking, taking a homework. You know, she, she needs help. She, I have to do, give it to her. You know, I, I'm the only savior here. I have to save her from uh, the problem she's in. There's nothing wrong in shaking hands. What do you th think? I'm nuts. This girl c comes to me in front of everybody else and, and puts her hand out. And I just say, I can't shake hands. It's, uh, my heart is clean. My intention is okay. It's a sin. Yes, but my intention is clean. And you shake hands. And then there's nothing wrong in uh, inviting, inviting her for a cup of coffee. And maybe have lunch together. And maybe chat on the phone for half an hour or an hour. Maybe go see a movie. Maybe, you know, go for a picnic or so, go for a drive or so, and so on, until the inevitable happens. Now, this, no one can claim that does not happen. This is the typical uh, uh, story that takes place wherever you have mixes between uh, the sexes, whether in school, whether in college, whether at work. No one, not even in the States. Even those, or in the West generally, even those who are married, if they work in a, a, a workplace with uh, females, eventually they're going to ha have to fall in sin. And, and if you make a, a, a survey, you would find that about 70% of the people that work in mixed uh, areas and working places have uh, cheated on their wives. And there are so many movies that tell you about this. And you don't have to go to the movies to find out about this.